Today, we're gonna cover five secrets that you may not have known about the bazooka. After World War II, the Allied Supreme Commander, General Dwight Eisenhower, was quoted as listing the four tools to victory that allowed the Allies to win World War II. They were the C-47 transport, the Jeep, the atomic bomb, and what we're gonna discuss today, the bazooka. In fact, we're gonna cover five secrets that you may not have known about the bazooka, so stay tuned. But if we're just meeting for the first time, my name is Ken, I am a mechanical engineer, pilot, and someone that loves digging into the secrets surrounding World War II. So let's get started digging into the secrets surrounding the Army's M1A1 bazooka rocket launcher. I thought the bazooka was simply a grenade launcher, a weapon allowing a soldier to launch a grenade farther than what he could regularly throw by hand. In fact, I couldn't have been more wrong. The bazooka, or officially the M1A1 rocket launcher, was a recoilless, man-portable anti-tank weapon. In fact, the M1A1 was the first generation of rocket-propelled anti-tank weapons used in combat. Okay, here's the first thing you may not have known about the bazooka. It actually received its name from a musical instrument used by comedian Bob Burns in the 1930s. During the initial evaluation of the M1A1 at the Aberdeen Proving Grounds in front of several high-ranking officers in early 1942, it was Major General Barnes who was chief of research and engineering of the Army's Ordnance Department. He's the one that commented, it sure looks like Bob Burns' bazooka. The resemblance is definitely there, so the name stuck. But it was during that initial round of testing at the Aberdeen Proving Grounds that we made our second discovery about the bazooka. The second secret we discovered about the bazooka, well, when it was presented at the Aberdeen Proving Grounds in early 1942 against several mortar-style weapons up for consideration for contracts, the rocket launcher prototype was so new, it didn't even have sights a soldier could use to aim it properly. That morning, the sights on the prototype were actually fashioned out of one of these, a wire coat hanger. In fact, the prototype of the bazooka scored several hits on a moving tank target, outperforming any of the other mortar-style weapons. Not only did the bazooka pack more of a punch than any other man-portable weapon, it also brought with it a lot of versatility. With the development of several different warheads, it was determined by evaluators that the bazooka could be an anti-tank weapon, a bunker buster, or an anti-personnel weapon. In fact, later in World War II, pilots strapped bazookas underneath the wings of their artillery spotting aircraft to take on German tanks. Did you know the bazooka was battery powered? I sure didn't. It had two batteries stored in the shoulder rest of the launch tube, one to detonate the rocket repellent, and the second as a spare backup in case the first battery went dead. When a soldier pulled the trigger on the bazooka, it completed a circuit through two wires running into a detonator lodged in the rocket propellant. The solid propellant would ignite, launching the warhead to the target. It was also a recoilless weapon, meaning there was very little kickback or recoil when the soldier pulled the trigger. The rocket was launched at relatively low speed, but when it reached its target, a secondary trigger was activated. And at that point, all hell broke loose, leading us to our fourth secret about the bazooka. The bazooka didn't launch a grenade. It actually launched what was called a shape charge, which has the ability to direct the energy of an explosion to a specific point, allowing it to punch through heavy enemy armor as thick as 75 millimeters or approximately three inches, leaving German panzer tanks vulnerable because their armor was typically about 60 millimeters thick. And this advantage lasted until about early 1943, when the Germans started bringing the Panther and Tiger tanks on the scene. But even these newer tank designs still had vulnerable parts, the back end, as well as the armor on top and underneath. It still gave the soldiers plenty of targets with their bazookas. In fact, the Germans were so envious of this weapon that they actually captured several bazookas and reverse engineered the design to create their own weapon, which they called the Panzerschreck. So what's the fifth secret you may not have known about the bazooka? As deadly as the bazooka was in the hands of an allied soldier, 
It also had the ability to destroy anything behind it. As you can see in this army training video, the second soldier that was required to load the bazooka prior to firing had to position himself out of the way. Otherwise, he would have been right in the middle of that rocket blast. I hope you found these five secrets about the bazooka helpful. In fact, if you even just learned one new thing about the bazooka, then I did my job. I hope you take this information, share it with your kids, share it with your friends, share it with anyone that might have an enthusiasm about World War II and particularly this type of weapon. So if you found this video useful and informative, please click and subscribe. If you knew about the bazooka but didn't know how it worked, I hope this video gave you some extra insight as to not only its capabilities but how it was developed. We'll be covering more secrets in future videos. My name is Ken. And thank you for checking out History X.